Good morning and welcome to our divine service. We would like to thank the Lord for sustaining us, for keeping us. The Bible actually says that it is because of God. Were it not for him, we would have long been consumed. We are going to read from the book of Job, Job chapter 14, verse 1. Job chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. It says in the King James Version, Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. The book of Job is calling us um, to a realization of how short men's days can be. Shall we pray? Eternal Father in heaven, we would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity. We invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of our talk and to take his place. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The book of Job calls us to a realization of the shortness of the days of men. We are living at a time where the hearts of many are filled with fear because of this very same fact. Questions are asked. Where is our hope in this age? What is it that we can hold on to that can give us courage to face even the grave itself? We are going to try and answer this from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1, which says, Remember the Creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil days cometh not, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. The book of Ecclesiastes is calling us to remember the Lord. What does it entail to remember the Lord in the days of our youth? And why are we required to remember or why are we advised to remember the Lord in the days of our youth? The youthful days, you'll agree with me that those are the days that you can do whatever you feel like. We, you know, when you meet up with the youth, you realize that there are people who are full of life. There are people who have desires. There are people who have so many wishes and are ready to fulfill them. These are the days where you'll be having the strength to do whatever you would like to do. But the Bible is saying the only thing that can prepare us for the evil days that are coming or the only thing that can prepare us for those days that we won't have pleasure in, this can be the old age, the old age. There will be a time where we'll face our old age, where we'll look back at our lives and recall how we have lead, lived. And God says if we really want to face these days and also face the grave with courage, we need to live a life that's pleasing to him. We need to build the courage characters during our youthful days, characters that are going to be something that will be valuable to us. Because even if you go to the SOP, it tells us that character is the only thing that we will take with us beyond the grave. And character is the only thing that comforted Job as he was going through his evil days. So talking of the youthful days, let me talk to our dear youths for a moment. What is it that you desire out of life? What is it that you so much wish you could get as a youth? Is it that career? Is it that job? Is it the partying, the drinking? Is it the fashion shows? Is it the sexual immoralities of this age? The Bible in the same book Ecclesiastes says, go on and fulfill all those desires of your life, but remember always that you will be held accountable for them. God will call you to judgment in, in, with the way you would have lived your life. And I can even take this opportunity to also talk to my little ones. You know, sometimes uh, the way we, we, we let our little ones do whatever they please in their lives, it's as if uh, that foundation doesn't really matter. God is concerned also with the way even our little ones are living. So wherever you are, little ones, remember also that God is even concerned about the little things that you do, the way you respond to mom and dad, the way you respond, the way you behave even in class, the way you behave in the streets when you are playing out there with your friends. God is concerned with the way you carry yourself, with the way you live your life. You know, it matters that you wake up in the in the morning and be a responsible little girl and do your bed. When mom asks you to do the dishes, it's also wise to, to listen to her because these things please it, pleases God. So God is asking us this morning, little ones, to be obedient and kind to others and always respect our elderly. We want to take a few minutes and consider the life of Job. Job is one of the men that lived a life that made it easier for him to face the evil days. Inasmuch as he was going through all these pains and suffering, 
Job managed to face those days with courage and keep, to keep on holding to Christ because of the way he had lived. In Job, if you go to the book of Job um, chapter 29, Job chapter 29, we find a narrative of the influence that Job had in his community and of the life that Job lived. If you go to verse 11, it says, when the ear had me, when the ear had me, then it blessed me, and the eye saw me, it gave witness to me, because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help. The first thing that we pick from this verse is that Job took care of the poor and the fatherless. You know, when you read uh, the context of the poor, in chapter 31, you realize that Job mentions his maid and men servants. The ones that we, 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 we have tamed our garden boys and the maids in this day. Job says, I always remembered that the same God who fashioned me in my mother's womb is the same God who made my garden boy. The same God who fashioned me in my mother's womb is the same God who fashioned my maid in, his, in her mother's home. So Job has this in mind to say, inasmuch as these people may look less privileged to me, though I may have the authority that I have over them, I am always reminded of the fact that God also loves those people and he is their creator as well. And I am held accountable for the way that I treat these people. Today in our homes, we have these people. These are the people that help us in our home duties. The way we treat them matters to God. How are you treating the maids and the garden boys that you have in your home? Are you giving them really what they are due? Or we are taking care, we are taking advantage of God's children. He also goes on to talk about the orphans. Many homes we find um, children that lost their parents. Many people have been um, so merciful to take those people into their homes and take care of them since they won't be having anyone to look after them. The question is, in you taking care of them, are you really treating those children the way they are supposed to be treated? Are you really treating those children with patience? Are you really taking good care of these children? Let's think of the way we treat those people that we took from our rural places and brought into our homes. Are we not turning God's children into slaves? Allow me to pause for a moment and um, run to Exodus chapter 22. Exodus chapter 22. Exodus chapter 22, we'll run to Exodus chapter 22. We want to find out God's feelings about his people. It says in verse 21, Thou shalt neither vest a stranger, nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. So this gives us a picture of how much God values the need in our lives. And God is vowing to say, if you dare mess with those people, I will deal with you myself. If we, we, we run to verse um, 12 of chapter 29, as Job continues narrating his life, in verse uh, 12, he say, in verse 13, he says, The blessing of him, him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widows to sing for joy. There is blessings that are apportioned for people who are going to take care of the needy. You know, I remember at some point someone saying they went through 2008 uh, without any problems because they had um, these mentally challenged people at their backyard. They, they kept the mentally challenged people. And because they were keeping God's people who, were, who had certain needs that only someone can chip in and address them, God ensured that these people never lack. And they went through that difficult time, which many of us failed to survive. They went through that time with God's care because they took care of the needy people. So what we are simply saying today is that if you become a channel of blessings, God will ensure that you will never lack. I think this is one of the reasons why we find that Job's world kept on multiplying and multiplying because God knew that if he blocks that channel, someone out there was going to die because their lives depended on Job. So he also mentions the widows. Job says that the widows, the widows rejoiced over me. The question that I have for us today is that 
do the widows who are around us rejoice over us? You know, some widows may not be um, people that are so far from us. The very parents that we have, maybe you are a child who lost a mother or who lost a father. The very parent who is in, in, the, in your rural home, is she rejoicing that they have a child who is taking good care of them? Let's always be reminded of these things, brothers and sisters, because these are the things that matters the most to, to, to God. And if we go to verse 15, Job says, I was eyes to the blind and feet was I to the lamb. You know, we live in a time where these people are, are so many in our streets. As you pass by, as you cross the roads in the streets of Bulawayo, I'm sure if you look around, you will find one blind person. And these people, sometimes they struggle crossing the roads because they won't be having anyone to assist them. You know, we are so busy with our business to a point of forgetting those people of God. And Job is saying, whenever I crossed a street of whatever town that he lived in, he says, I always looked around to see that that wasn't there a, a blind person who needed my help. When it, comes to, when it comes to the lame, Job says, I ensured that whatever they needed, that their feet could not take them to. Job says, I always made sure that I address such issues. So Job is talking about the disabled who are amongst us. These are the people who are not privileged enough to have some of the things that we have. There are people who are blind, there are people who are deaf. And because of their disabilities, they are not able to do certain things. God is saying, I put these people deliberately so as to build your characters by you noticing these people and helping them. Something is developed in us. Something Christ-like is developed in us and we grow in Christian character. And as we go on, um, as we jump to chapter 31, you realize that Job talks about the issue of clothing those who needed clothes. He talks even about the issue of sharing his table or his food with many and with orphans. The question that I have again this morning is, there are a lot of people out there. You know, sometimes we are so privileged that we cook all these meals and and sometimes we even fail to finish them. Our beans are filled up with this food that we, 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 we cook because we have the money anyway to buy these things. And God is saying, why at least you are throwing that plate away. Someone in the street is crying of hunger. Someone in the street is saying, oh Lord, won't you give me just a plate so that I can survive the day. So Job is saying, in as much as I had all this wealth, in as much as I could afford all these things, I could eat whatever I want, I always remembered the people of God who are in need and ensured that I shared a meal with them. He actually goes on to say, even when it comes to winter, I ensured that I clothed them with warm clothes so that they can survive those times. So when you look at the life of Job, we realize that Job was a person who lived a life of recognizing the poor around him. And that made him to be courageous and say, indeed, when it comes to that which is key that God wants us to do, I did live a life that is pleasing to God. And what Job did, we can find in James 1 verse, 20, verse 27, which says that taking care of the needy is one of the things that matters to God and assists us in Christian, um, in character building. God is looking for people today. Maybe before we even get to the type or to the kind of people that God is looking at, is looking for. If we go to verse 16, it says, I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not, I searched out. You know, sometimes we come up with a lot of excuses as to avoid helping these needy people. When we look around, sometimes we say, well, I can't find an orphan, or well, I can't find a street kid. Job says, I searched out for those people. When Job looked around him and realized that he couldn't find any of these people, he went into the streets to look for the street kids. He went into the orphanage to look for the orphans. He went into the old people's homes to search for those old people. You know, Job looked for the opportunities of helping the needy. And God is saying to us today, won't you all go out there and look for those opportunities? We need not relax and say, you know, these people are not fine wherever we are. We need to go out there and search for those people. So this morning, God is looking for people who will flood the streets of Bulawa, looking for those children we have tamed the street kids. God is looking for people who will set their foot in the rural homes they last 
visited the day they buried that old great grandmother. God is looking for a people that will knock in the prison doors in pursuit of his children in darkness. God is looking for young people who will remember that there is more to life than just eating and drinking. And there is more to life than just satisfying the desires of the flesh. There is more to life than just roaming around aimlessly. God is looking for fathers this morning who will remember that they have a responsibility towards the seeds that they plant in the homes of many in careless moments of pleasure they term one night stands. The world today is faced with horrible cases of abused children, all because of people who failed to live right in their youthful days. The world is faced by a number of street children who lack food to satisfy hunger, not to talk about the medical attention for their days of illnesses. Today we are talking about um, the children who are at risk in the world, the children who are in this umbrella um, term of the needy. There are many children today who are suffering in the world, my dear brothers and sisters. These children need someone to stand up whilst they still have strength. These children need someone to search them out and provide the little needs. You also realize that the needs that these people really want are not the needs that call for much resources. Some are just people or kids who need food. Some are just street kids who need a roof over their heads. Some are just people who are already being taken care of in the old people's homes, who probably need some extra uh, toiletries or just some warm clothes so that they can survive the winter. Some are just our parents who are in our rural areas who need that 2 kg of sugar so that they can have tea, or who need that 10, kg, 10 kgs of millimeal or 2 liters of cooking oil so that they can also carry on with their lives. So the world is faced with issues of old people who, needs to be cared, who need to be cared for because people have suddenly, because of the people who have suddenly forgotten that they have parents, because of the, the people who have suddenly forgotten that there is some, someone out there who gave birth to them and they ensured that they grow up to the stage they are today. So we are appealing to you, our brothers and sisters, we are appealing to you this morning, dear saints, to say God is calling us. Who, who is he who will stand up and say, I will go? God is saying, I put these people around you for a reason. And this reason is to build a Christian character in you. Even in the midst of a world um, that is so full of selfishness, a world that is so full of people um, who don't consider the needy, we praise God for the few jobs, for the Dorcases. We give glory to God for the people who still remember that God needs us to take care of each other. We praise God for the hearts that are still touched by these little children who need to be taken care of. And I would like to give an encouragement to someone out there to say, probably you've been taking care of many people and the same people that you've taken care of, the needy people that you've been taking care of, have not appreciated the little that you do to them. Hebrews chapter 6 comes to us this morning. Paul has this to say, that the Lord is not unrighteous to forget the labor that you've done to his saints. God does not forget, my dear brothers and sisters, the good work that we, we, we do for him. He actually keeps record of the good things. In as much as he does keep the record of the bad things that we do, he does as well with terrible exactness keep the, 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 the record of the good things that we do for his people. In Matthew 25 verse 46, God says, in as much as you did these things for these people, you actually did them for me. And if you go to the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 13, it says that these people you know, sometimes you may feel like um, you, 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 you sacrificed a lot for certain people to a point of not getting that which you would have desired to get in this life, and your works have not really been appreciated. Revelation 14 verse 13 is saying, these people, their works, they will take to the grave. And God, my dear friends, is going to reward us for all that we've done for him. Allow me to end this talk by saying, Christianity is not all about conformity to the standards of the do's and don'ts. It's actually a lifestyle. You realize that, um, I like the words of Job. At some point, Job in chapter 31, verse 6, he says, weigh me in balances 
in the scale, in balanced scales. You know, when Jobs narrates his life or when Jobs gives an account of his youthful days, he says that I did good to a point that I can stand up and ask God to weigh me in balances, in balanced scales. Can we today stand with Job and say God should weigh our actions and say God to, should weigh our intentions and say God should weigh everything that we did as we lived in our youthful days? So this we can only utter as we become a part of the character building that God requires us to do today. Allow me to say in closing that this morning as we are looking at the World Day, World Children Day at Risk or the World Day of the Children at Risk, we are appealing to people out there who are touched by these souls God is saying, I have my needy people. I have people who don't have anyone to assist them. God is calling someone today to use their resources wisely towards those people. Actually, if we read in the pen of inspiration, it actually says that God gives us this wealth so that we can be of help to other people. He actually says that the wealth that he gives us, in the world that he gives us, there is a portion for the need. But all these years, we've been living however way we want. All these years, We've uh, used the funds that God has had intended for his needy people. I'm looking for someone today. I want to pray with someone today. Maybe we can start with the youth. I want to pray with a youth who says, Lord, I thank you because I still have an opportunity to do that which is right. Lord, I thank you because I still have time to correct my ways. I may have lived a life that is not proper. I may have wasted away some of my years, but I thank you because I still have time. And there are a few opportunities that I can seek, just like Job went out and sought the opportunities to help the need. I am willing as a youthful person to go out there and seek those opportunities. I am willing to live a life that is pleasing. I am willing to start being obedient to my parents. I am willing to live all that life of partying, be it drugs or whatsoever things that you may have gone through so far in life. I want to pray with a youth that says, I am ready to correct the ways of my life and live a life that I'm going to recall in my later days and be able to rejoice and say, indeed, I have lived for my creator. I also want to pray. Maybe you realize that in the way that you've treated the people that are under you, maybe you are one person who have authority, and you realize that in the way that you've treated the people that are around, uh, around you, you are in danger of God's judgment. God is saying to us today, come unto me and I'll give you rest. He says, actually, come unto me, though your sins be as red as scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. I'm looking for someone who is saying, Lord, from today onwards, I want to commit into taking good care of the people who are less privileged in my life. I want to commit into taking care of those people, Lord, that, that are looking for the needs that no one is fulfilling. I also want to pray for the people who are saying, Lord, it may seem too late for us because already we are facing those evil days. You know, old age has a way of, um, of making people give up on life, of making people think that it is too late for them to correct their ways. God is saying this morning, I am looking for someone who is saying, Lord, I am privileged to be alive. But when I look back at my life, I realize that I have not lived a pleasing life. I realize that there are many mistakes that I've made in my life. I realize that there are opportunities that I've not used wisely. And time, time is something that I no longer have. I am facing the evil days and I'm wondering if things can be made right. Oh, Lord, help me this morning. I'm looking for those, those kind of people. If you are there somewhere, you can commit your heart to God as we pray. Eternal Father in heaven, this morning we want to thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you have your people whom we are supposed to take care of. You have the needy people, Father, whom you put under us. Some of us have been abusing those people. There are kids who are crying over their stepmothers and stepfathers. There is a young girl somewhere, Lord, who is crying because probably they were sexually abused. There is a young person who is in the streets 
somewhere, Lord, who doesn't have roof over their head. And they are crying, Lord, even for food. Right now we are getting into winter. There are people, Lord, who need warm clothing. All these are the needs that are around us. And we haven't been realizing, or probably we've just been ignorant of those needs. We want to pray this morning for us, for you to be merciful on us, to forgive us, Lord, for not taking care of these people or for neglecting these people. Because we read in Exodus 22 that you are so particular when it comes to those people. We are young people, Lord. We've wasted our lives. But of course, we thank you so much because we still have the opportunity to correct many things that have gone wrong in our lives because we are still in those youthful days where we can, Lord, run around for many people, where we can do mission, Lord, where we can be the feet to the lamb, where we can be the eyes to the blind, where we can be pleasing to our parents, where we can support our parents, where we can be good people and model the Christian character out there. We plead for your mercy, for your mercies this morning that you may forgive us, Lord, of all these wrongs that we did. And I also want to pray, Father, for the little ones, Lord. Sometimes as parents, we don't give the little ones the lessons that they really need to realize that even in their, in their, in their young days, even in the days when they are so little, they really need to do that which is right. They need to start exercising that which is right. We pray even for the little ones, Lord, that as they are laying the foundations for their lives, for the parents who are laying the foundations for these children's lives, that you may, Lord, be with them. You may give them the skills of parenting in such difficult times. All this we pray, trusting and believing in Christ's name. Amen.